USA Network. Ah, here's to you anytime. Oh, come here. Hi. I let myself in because there's nobody at the front desk. Where's Barbara? Barbara asked if she could take an early lunch. Then what about our lunch? Well, just you give me five minutes to clear all this stuff up, and I'll I'll be ready to go. Want me to help? Sure. If you could hand me some of that. Oh, Jay Avery, right there on top. Does that mean she was here recently? Yesterday. Well, how is she, or is that confidential information? Nothing new to report medically. There, there was something, however. Well, really, something you're not very happy about. Well, it just wasn't very pleasant. She started talking about Derek, and I thought it would be a good time to ask her uh, if she was considering telling him the truth about her. Oh, and? Her reaction was immediate. Negative. Yeah, she said she had no intention of telling him about her illness, thought it would turn him off completely. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. She does. She thought he'd be kind, sympathetic, utterly repelled by seeing a woman who... Anyway, that was her decision. Well, it's hers to make. I just... I just think it's so unfair to Derek. I thought so, too. I told her that. It didn't do any good. She just got upset. She... She made me swear again that we would keep her secret no matter what. Did she cry? Yes. Did you hold her? I'm sorry. God. Ignore that last remark. I hope you did hold her, the poor woman. It's just that... Oh, sometimes I'm so ashamed of myself. I have these uncharitable thoughts about that woman. Not you. You're incapable of it. Oh, no, I'm not. You know, I... I did talk to Nora about it, and I told her that I was aware that she was making these insinuations about you and Jinx to Mrs. Goodman. And? She swore that she wouldn't do it anymore, and she meant it. Good. Nora? Hi. You must be Barbara. I wasn't sure I'd to know you. I should have arrived first. You would have recognized the uniform. Well, my uniform isn't quite as distinctive as yours. <laughs> well, it's certainly nice to meet you at last. We've talked on the phone so often. It's nice I... to meet you, too. Well, how is Dr. Cavanaugh this morning? Oh, his usual busy self. <laughs> Hi. Would you like a cocktail? Uh, I'd like a glass of dry white wine, please. Sure. Well, Mrs. Cavanaugh is fine today. As a matter of fact, she's having lunch with the doctor. Yes, I know. You know, it's really strange. You know everything that he's doing, and I know everything that she's doing. 
Have you worked for her very long? No, just a couple of months. Oh, well, then we started pretty much at the same time. Mm. I hope she's as nice to work for as the doctor. Yes, she's very nice. Too nice, as a matter of fact. I guess that's why I feel sorry for her. What was that? <laughs> Listen to me. I haven't been here with you for two minutes, and already I'm crying on your shoulder. I guess it's the uniform. I always feel like I can trust a nurse. <laughs> But I, I don't understand. Why should you feel sorry for Mrs. Cavanaugh? She's got an awful lot going for her. Including the wonderful doctor. Well, yes. Him most of all. Now, he is really one of the most handsome men I've ever... Oh. <laughs> um, Nora, you spend a good deal of time at their home, don't you? Yes, Mrs. Cavanaugh likes to work at home. As a matter of fact, I've become one of the family, practically. I see. And, of course, being her private secretary, I've also become her confidant, you know. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, shall we look at the menu? Oh, yes, of course. I have to be back in an hour. Um, you still haven't told me... About what? You, you know, why you're sorry for Mrs. Cavanaugh. Well, I shouldn't have said anything. I... I don't know what got into me blurting it out that way. I guess I felt I could trust you. I feel like I know you, even though we've just met. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, I've told you this much. I guess it wouldn't be fair to... Barbara, Mrs. Cavanaugh believes... Well, she knows rather, that the doctor is not the most faithful of husbands. You're kidding. I wish I were. No. This isn't something I'm guessing at. She's actually talked to me about it. Well, for heaven's sake. I tell her it's just her imagination, that obviously he loves her. Well, that's certainly how it seems to me. I, he, he's always so attentive. He's always sending her flowers and so forth. Well... <laughs> I'm afraid that's what philandering husbands do. I guess he feels a little guilty. Oh, my gosh. I, I really can't believe this. You know, when you do a job like mine, you can't help but notice things. I mean, I never tell Mrs. Cavanaugh what I notice, but all the time he says he's in one place when he's actually in another altogether. You mean he lies to her? All the time. And the women that call the house, all hours, they claim to be his patient. <laughs> They're not his patients. There's one woman in particular, an actress. An actress? Oh, you must mean... Well, of course, you would know her. Yeah. Uh, she is his patient, of course. But it's more than a patient-doctor relationship. You must mean Miss Avery. She was in the office just yesterday, and... Well, the truth is, I was kind of bothered by what I saw. What you saw? I, I really shouldn't say anything. It, it's definitely telling tales out of school. Well, I've certainly been open with you, Barbara. I, I really shouldn't. Listen, if you're afraid that I'm going to tell Mrs. Cavanaugh, don't worry. I never tell her anything negative about her husband. Well, this Avery girl called unexpectedly yesterday. Now, usually, Dr. Cavanaugh won't see a patient without an appointment. But... In this case, he made an exception. Yes. Well, that surprised me. But what surprised me even more was when I went into his office, there she was, in his arms. In his arms? You mean that... You mean they were kissing? No, not kissing. She... She was very upset. She kept saying something about... Saying uh, what? Well, it was something about, um... Yeah. Never letting go. That, those were her words. That she can't ever let go.
What a mess. Mexican meatloaf. Ole? I need help. So why's that lemon liquid here? Got a better idea? Undoubtedly. Introducing <laughs> new improved joy. One little squirt puts the toughest squeeze on dirt. Look, on tough foods like this, joy cleans better than your lemon liquid. My brand couldn't cut the dirt. Joy left its dish shining. Nice shine. Uh-huh. Wow, great looking table. New lemon fresh joy. One little squirt puts the toughest squeeze on dirt. Oh, musty odors. We need Arm & Hammer Maximum Strength Carpet Deodorizer. More odor-destroying ingredient than these combined. And while those sit on top, Arm & Hammer Carpet Deodorizer penetrates, destroys deep down odors. The whole room's fresh. They work better, cost less. You put the Arm & Hammer baking soda in the freezer. It's not a mistake, Harry. One box to absorb freezer odors and a fresh box to absorb refrigerator odors. Freshen the fridge and freezer with Arm & Hammer Pure Baking Soda. Ask your dentist. Before he scrapes that ugly tartar off your teeth, ask him why so many dentists are switching from their toothpastes to this one. Tartar control crest in the silver box. Dentists know that besides fighting cavities, tartar control crest does something no fluoride toothpaste could ever do. Fight ugly tartar. Dentists proved it works in three years of clinical tests. Look, hard, crusty tartar takes a dentist or hygienist to scrape it off. But you can help keep visible tartar off your teeth between dental cleanings with Tartar Control Crest. But don't just take my word for it. Ask your dentist about Tartar Control Crest, the dentist's choice for fighting tartar. perfect. <laughs> Is it really just for the two of us? Mm-hmm. It's just for you and just for me. And it's got all of the modern inconveniences that modern life can offer. It has no telephone. Oh, good. It has no people for miles and miles <laughs> around. Great. It has no central heating. You're kidding. It well, don't worry. There are plenty of heaters and you've got a husband here to keep you warm. I just hope it's not too remote, because I want to go shopping. I want to see people. I want to go skiing. Oh, I'm... you can do that. Here, you see straight over there? Yeah. Past that bunch of trees? Yeah. That's where a trail begins. That goes right down into town. We want to go down into town. We put on our skis, go down the trail. <laughs> when we're done in town, we get the helicopter to drop us off right over there. Perfect, perfect. But I haven't skied in two years, you know. Well, we'll get you an instructor. Great. To make sure he's very young and very good looking. You know, I kind of want him to have an accent. Oh, no okay. way. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Come on. I want to get you somebody who's short and fat. <laughs> And balding? No. Oh, mm -hmm. Because I've got the most beautiful woman in Samaritz right here by my side. And she and I are about to begin our second honeymoon right now. Forgive me, please. Uh, uh, perhaps I should have waited outside, but the weather turned so cold. Oh. <laughs> Herr Brunner. Yes, yes, Mr. Witte. That's right. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Oh, this is my wife. Oh, I'm charmed, Mrs. Witte. Charmed. <laughs> well, I apologize again for being in here. Th that... That's okay. Are you from the welcome wagon? Uh, oh, Mr. Brunner is the one who made all this possible on very, very short notice. Of uh, the rental agent. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope that everything will be to your satisfaction. Uh, Mrs. Whitney, 
I, uh, I took the liberty to build a fire to make your arrival a little more, little more gemütlich, uh, nicer. <laughs> well, yes, it certainly is very gemütlich. It looks wonderful. Thank you. Look at this. We have flowers. We have fruits. We have a basket. What is this? Oh, yeah, my, my wife prepared a little supper, and, and I hope that you will enjoy this to go with it. This, this is a, a bottle of, of, of Liebfrau. Oh, Liebfrau. Oh, you thought of everything here, Broner. Thank you. Yes, and here's a paper in English, and I, I also stocked the, the liquor cabinet for you, Mr. Vetney. Well, thank you very much. That's just fine. Thank you. And just one more thing. Yeah, this is a big surprise. Uh -huh. <laughs> here, here, look. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah, well, uh, it uh, took a little doing to do this, but uh, well, well, I finally managed to get you, it done. Uh, you see, Herr Broner, I, I, I've been trying to get away from telephones. Oh, but a uh, telephone, uh, most people, especially Americans... We're uh, delighted uh, to uh, have the telephone. Actually, it'll help me feel a little less isolated. Yeah, well, honey, we're on our honeymoon. Isolation is the idea, isn't it? Well, I'm, I'm so very, very sorry. I only thought that maybe... Well, uh, you uh, see, part of the reason we came to Switzerland was to get away from the world, and that is one of the main symptoms of the disease known as civilization. Well, of course, I can uh, have it removed no, if no, you want to... No, no, don't, don't. It's wonderful, and we're very grateful. Well, in, in, in that case, I, I shall leave you to yourselves. Now, I hope that you're going to have a, a wonderful stay here. Oh, but, but I must warn you, we had some very bad storms here and some of the trails are closed. Now, a, a honeymoon is not so much fun uh, uh, if you have a leg in a cast. <laughs> <laughs> well, auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love everything. I even love the telephone. Yeah, well, if I get one business call, it goes out. I just, I, I'll probably want to call home and make sure everything's all right. Well, that is not exactly the first thing that you do on a, on a honeymoon. You no. Know, as soon as the helicopter brings my clothes, I'll slip into something more comfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Raven, I can practically hear what you're thinking. I can't help it. I can't get Bobby's shoe off my mind. The shoe in our car is not Bobby's shoe. Why can't you just take my word for it, honey? Now, here, come on. We'll have a little wine. We'll begin our honeymoon without any further talk of murder or of police or of any of those other things that go into making up civilization. You can tell a lot from body language. This means I'm shy. This means I'm not. And this means I need help from my unbeatable bodybuilding system, Prell Shampoo and Prell Conditioner. Prell Fullness, Prell Body, Prell Nice, the Prell bodybuilding system for unbeatable body and fullness. Prell shampoo and Prell conditioner. It says you look great in any language. These are the amazing Lee press-on nails. They press on in seconds. No glue, no mess. Simply press on Lee super stick tabs. Then press on Lee press-on nails. That's all. Easy on, easy off. Use them again and again. They just won't break or split. Polish, and they're nearly impossible to chip. So press on. Lee press-on nails. In natural and glamour lengths and a variety of sizes for a quick, easy fit. Press on. The Donna Circle celebrates Homecoming 86 at its 11th annual antique show and sale. Several features and events at the show will focus on Tennessee. 34 dealers from throughout the country will display quality, affordable antiques for sale in room settings. Furniture, oriental rugs, silver, jewelry, and porcelain. Gallery tours are available to enhance your knowledge and enjoyment of the show. Tickets are available to all events at the ticket office at Park Place Mall or call 682-0009. Since 1863, people have used Dr. Tishner's to kill germs, and kill germs it has. As an antiseptic for minor first aid, as a gargle to soothe sore throats, and as a long-lasting, cool-tasting, peppermint-flavored mouthwash. And today, 122 years later, people still use Dr. Tishner's for all those very same reasons. Dr. Tishner's, it's much more than just another mouthwash. 
Ja, 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 ja. Nein, nein, ich weiß nicht. Ja, danke schön. Uh, auf Wiedersehen. Sweetheart, all of the lines are busy, but she's going to try again a little later on. I hope not too much later. Uh, uh, listen, why don't, uh, why don't I go in and uh, I'll take a shower and I'll, I'll shave. I'll be out in a minute. You. Damien Tyler is going to come by in the next day or so. Police? Yeah, that's right. He's going to come pick up a shoe that I left on the coffee table. A shoe, Mrs. Whitney? Yes, Spencer. If you're in the living room and you turn around and you look at the coffee table, there will be a woman's shoe on it. There isn't any shoe on the table, Mrs. Whitney. What do you mean there isn't a shoe on the table? Well, there isn't. But, however, I noticed something peculiar in the fireplace when I came home yesterday. It, it looked like the remains of a woman's shoe. How did a shoe get in the fireplace when I put it on the coffee table? Well, I really couldn't say, Mrs. Whitney. Spencer, look. Uh, be honest with me. I mean, I'm not going to be angry with you. Did you maybe pick up a girl at some point and take her for a little drive? No, Mrs. Whitney, never. No, no, serious. Come on, you can talk to me, Spencer. I mean, did you pick up a girl Mrs. maybe? Mrs. Whitney, I swear to you that I would never use your automobile in that way. But I found a shoe under the front seat of the car, and I'm very confused because if you don't know who it belongs to, then it must be... What do you think you're doing? I, I'm talking to Spencer. Spencer, this is Mr. Whitney calling. Now, you know that you're not telling the truth about that shoe. Mr. Whitney, I'm not quite sure. I know for a fact that, that you had a girlfriend in the car, and that's where the shoe came from. If it ever happens again, Spencer, you're fired. You get it? Skyler, he said that the shoe was burned, that he found it in the fireplace. Well, that makes sense. He knew it would get him in trouble, so he tried to destroy the evidence. Yeah, I know, but he also said that he didn't have a girl in the car. Well, of course he'd say that, honey. It's a well-paying job that he didn't want to lose. Get it? I guess so. But now Damien Tyler's going to get the letter, he's going to get over there, and there's going to be no shoe. Well, it was a silly idea to write the letter in the first place. I guess, but this is very, very strange. Well, look, sweetheart, if we're going to spend our second honeymoon talking about uh, shoes and about Spencer's girlfriends, maybe no. we ought to book passage home, huh? No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. You know, when they first introduced these soft cleansers, I thought, what a great idea. And they are, except for one thing. They don't clean that well. Introducing one that does. Now there's a new soft cleanser with cleaning power that's amazing. Introducing Mr. Clean Soft Cleanser. No other soft cleanser has the cleaning power of new Mr. Clean. With an active formula that actually cuts through grease and grime on contact. So new Mr. Clean cleans better. It took the power of the man to do what no one else can do. Safely clean with lots of muscle and let the shine come through. You're quite a man. The Better Cleaning Soft Cleanser. New from Mr. Clean. P.S. I love you. Progresso Soup, I love you for your minestrone. I love you for your chicken noodle. The best tasting soup? This side of my soup. P.S. Progresso Soup, I love you. Do you know what all these people have in common? They are all members of the National Rifle Association. Why have three million Americans joined the NRA? For just $15, you receive full membership, which includes $300 gun theft insurance, $10,000 accidental death and dismemberment insurance, $100,000 shooter's liability insurance, and your choice of NRA's official magazines, The American Hunter or The American Rifleman. NRA is easily the shooter's biggest bargain, so why not join now? To join the NRA, simply dial the toll-free number on your screen. 
Join the NRA today and get an NRA Shooter's Cap free. To join, call toll-free 1-800-453-1904. 1-800-453-1904. We'll bill you later. Spencer couldn't have thrown the shoe in the fireplace. Raven, for God's sake. No, really, listen for a second. I just thought of this. He was in the car with me. You were the only one in the living room. I won't mention it again. Um, I'm going to go put something else on. I'm cold. Travel furnished by Capital Air. Kennedy is an enraged man bent on revenge. John Mills co-stars in The Human Factor on the USA movie. Thursday at 8 on USA. TV's most innovative continuing drama is back. Getting nostalgic already? The Edge of Night. Next on USA.